Well, fellas, finally happened. I have a video featured on the RTL SDR blog website. My life goals have been achieved, and I can retire from my RF hacking career as an accomplished man. And my RF hacking childhood hero, absolute Linux magician and software-defined radio wizard, Aaron from the SEMA Executor YouTube channel, retweeted this post on Twitter. I feel a bit starstruck. <laughs> I'm going to take a sip of beer in recognition of this achievement. Cheers. In the past week or so, I've had a lot of newcomers subscribe to my channel because of this video. Which shows my viewers how exactly GSM communications are decrypted and decoded by hackers and security researchers alike. In this video, I make a lot of mistakes in the form of misreading numbers, misreading the names of software tools, and finally completely messing up the final part of the tutorial by making viewers copy and paste completely irrelevant information. I apologize for that. And I also claim that the capture, GSM capture file that we used for that video was never publicly cracked before. And that turned out to be factually incorrect. Bastian Engelbert, who is the author of the tool called Top GUW, cracked this file before I did. You can check out his video here, it's really cool. So in this video that I'm recording now, I'm going to correct all the wrongs of the past and present a GSM cracking video that has a more streamlined and simplified workflow. The main difference that you will immediately notice is that I'm not using my Dragon OS 18.04 virtual machine anymore. And if you haven't figured it out already, yes, that means we no longer have to use the long outdated software toolset at Eprobe. Good stuff. Yes, you heard that correctly. No more air probe. Yay. Theoretically, you should just be able to download the latest Dragon OS Focal ISO from SourceForge, install it into a virtual machine, and use GRGSM to extract raw GSM bursts instead of the obsolete air probe. So I want to keep this video as short as possible. So without further delay, let's decrypt some real GSM data in real time. First, we are going to need some A51 encrypted GSM data in the form of a .c file capture file. A C file is basically a computer interpreted recording of GSM radio waves as received by an RF front end of a software defined radio. This person on the GRGSM GitHub issues section has kindly uploaded some recorded GSM data that was destined for his mobile phone. And you can download that capture file right here. And as you can see, he has also supplied the encryption key already. But just for fun, we will perform a complete workflow on how to obtain the KC value and decrypt this GSM data. So here we go. So as you can see here, I have my cracking environment all set up and ready to go. I have my, I have launched Wireshark. I've opened a terminal window. I have the capture file inside my working directory. I have a calculator app opened. And I have a text document ready for data inputs. So I'll just make a note quickly regarding the capture file. Something I do with all my capture files is I always write the frequency and the sample rate into the file name because those are the most two important pieces of data that we need to send to GRGSM decode. 
So this uh, this capture file was captured on a frequency of 952 megahertz, and the sample rate was two mega samples per second, which is the number two with six zeros following it. So the first step in the process of finding the KC decryption key is we need to find a target unencrypted packet in Wireshark. So to do that, we will first run grgsm decode and decode the SD, SDCCH8 channel on time slot one. And you can do that with the following command. We hit enter on that. Now there's three packets in the top window pane of Wireshark that we could potentially use as our target unencrypted packet. We can use system information type five packets. We can use system information type six packets, and we can also use function equals UI packets. Because the owner of the GSM data capture file told us the encryption key already, we can supply GRGSM decode with the KC value and decrypt the SDCCH8 to see when and how often this particular GSM base transceiver station is transmitting these packets. So I know for a fact that this GSM base transceiver station is transmitting system information type five frames every 204 frames. And it is also transmitting type six system information frames every 306 frames. And it doesn't seem to be transmitting function UI packets that often because function UI packets are only sent when the base station has nothing to say. So because there's lots of data transiting this base station, it's not sending these packets often. So we're going to choose system information type five as our target unencrypted frame. And we need to copy the frame number of this packet and paste it into our working text document. So from now on, I'm going to refer to this packet as the SI5 packet. So we click on the SI5 packet in the top window pane of Wireshark. We double click GSM tap header and find the field name GSM frame number. Right click, point to copy, click on value, and then we paste that under target unencrypted frame number. Next, we need to guess if and when and where the next SI5 packet exists after the encryption process initiated. So a system information type five packet was transmitted after this ciphering mode command somewhere in an encrypted form. Because we have confirmed that this GSM base station is transmitting SI5 packets every 204 frames, we can use a calculator to add 204 to the frame number 746268. So we will copy the target unencrypted frame number. We will paste it into our calculator and we will add 204 and hit equals. And then we copy the result and paste it under guest encrypted frame number. So frame number 746472 could be the encrypted version of an SI5 packet. So I just wanna show you something quickly. The reason we can eliminate air probe is because 
we have sent grgsm decode these two arguments. I can't remember which one's which, but I believe P will print the raw GSM bursts, and I think V will print the X version of the packet. So because we have instructed grgsm decode to print the raw GSM bursts, instead of outputting these to a text document with AirProbe, like we did in my first GSM cracky video, we will just copy the information we need directly from the terminal window. So it's a lot easier. So these 114 bit long strings of binary ones and zeros are the raw bursts of GSM communications. Each one of these bursts defines a single GSM frame and four frames define a packet. Which then Wireshark uses to present it and display it in a nice human readable format for us. So ultimately these strings of ones and zeros and these strings of hex with some Programming magic make Wireshark display turns this language into human language. So what we need to do is we need to copy the four raw GSM bursts that define our target unencrypted packet. And then we need to paste them into our working text document. So what I'll do now is I'll copy the target unencrypted frame number. We'll go back over to our terminal window. Click on the actions menu. Click find. And at the bottom of the window, paste the value. And the terminal should just jump directly to where our four raw GSM bursts were printed. So we need to copy all the bursts or all yeah all four bursts starting with seven four six two six eight to seven four six two seven one. So I'll just go ahead and highlight those four lines. We copy them and we paste them under target unencrypted frame bursts. Next, we need to also do the same for our guest encrypted packet. We copy the frame number and paste it into the find field at the bottom of the terminal. And then we copy the four bursts starting from 746472 all the way to 746475. We will copy them and paste them into our guest encrypted frame burst section of our working text document. So next we need to XOR each target unencrypted frame burst with the guest encrypted frame bursts. We can do this with Kraken's XOR.py utility, which is inside the utilities directory. You don't need to compile Kraken to utilize the Python script for XORing. It's just something that you can download directly from GitHub and utilize, providing you have Python installed on your computer which it is pre-installed and working already in DragonOS. So I'll just put this down here.
And you know, once we have the results of our XOR output, we can copy that into our working text document. So yeah, we're reaching the boring phase of the tutorial once again. And this line here is the result of exoring this burst and that burst. Can be a, a bit tedious sometimes this step. There is automation tools that can take care of guessing and exoring for you, but I'm not skilled enough as a coder to write such a software tool. So I do it the manual way. And doing it the manual way gives you a good understanding of exactly what is happening during the uh, cracking phase. Okay, so just to recap what we did, we so just to recap what we did, each one of these outputs is the result of exoring this burst and that burst and so on and so forth. So what we have just performed now is what cryptographical experts call a known plain text attack. One of these four strings of 114 binary ones and zeros is a pure A51 key stream. And these key streams are what we need to feed to Kraken in order to crack this GSM capture file. So I have um, Kraken started up and waiting for input now. So I'll go ahead and copy the first XOR result and paste it next to the word crack and then hit enter on that. And while we're waiting, I will we'll have more beer. So recently I got a new um, Kraken PC it was just a $250 fourth gen Core i5 that I sourced off Facebook Marketplace. And I also have upgraded my Kraken hard drive to a Samsung SSD. So the new computer coupled with the new SSD have reduced my cracking times from 2 minutes and 20 seconds to about 35 to 40 seconds which is really, really nice for when you're trying to record a YouTube video. So we can see that the first result did not deliver results. So I'll just write no next to that. I will copy and paste the second result. I'll write crack, put a space. Paste the second result and hit enter. I'm not using my Decker computer either. I haven't figured out what the candidate key results, how they translate to this version of Kraken. I'm not sure. It's, it's completely different format, how Decker finds the candidate key. So once I can sort that out, I can use my Decker machine for cracking where it only takes about seven seconds. 
a lot faster than 40 seconds. Bingo! Inside the second XOR burst, Kraken has found a candidate key at bit position 48, which means 48 bits into this string of 114 bits. And it found it on attempt number one, rainbow table 372. So that's really cool. So we'll need to copy the successful result and paste it under Kraken Output in our working text document. Now, this key that Kraken has found is not the decryption key for this GSM data. And this was deliberate because the A51 cracking project team wanted to make it as difficult and as confusing as possible to, in order to keep Kraken out of the hands of script kiddies like myself. So we need to gather more information into our text document and generate some more input to feed to another Kraken utility called Find KC. This application will finally provide us with the KC value that the GSM base station provided this mobile phone at the time the capture file was being recorded. So we need to find three separate pieces of information in our text document now. We need to find the guest encrypted frame count, the previous guest encrypted frame count, and the previous frame burst XOR output. So under the guest encrypted, frame, uh, guest encrypted frame bursts section of our text document, we will see two separate values before the raw GSM burst ones and zeros. The first one is the frame number and the second one is the frame count. So we know that the second burst gave results So we need to copy the frame count value from one of 1152173 and paste it under guest encrypted frame count. Next, we need to find the previous bursts frame count because we know the second burst gave results. We will copy the value of 115 two one four zero copy that paste it under previous guest encrypted frame count and the final value we need is to find the previous frame burst XOR output because the second burst gave us results the first XOR output is the one we need to copy and paste it under previous frame burst XOR output. Now we have all the relevant data we need to assemble the command to feed to find KC and finally extract the encryption key. So what we do is I'll just expand our text document a little bit. So the first thing we need to do is copy the candidate key. And we write dot slash find underscore KC, put a space, paste the candidate key. We write the bit position of 48. We write the guest encrypted frame count. Paste that. We copy the previous guest encrypted frame count. And then finally, we copy and paste 
the previous frame burst XOR output. This is a completed command, which we can now send to find KC. So I will copy that. CD into our Kraken utilities folder. And I'll paste this command here and hit enter. So, bingo. We paste uh, this 16 digit hex string is the 64 bit session key, which the GSM base station provided this mobile telephone in order to secure the private user data. So we will copy the KC value. We will paste it into our text document. We'll hit save and keep it as a monument to our hard work and dedication to hobbyist cryptography. So yeah, that is really, really cool. This new method I've devised using GRGSM instead of AirProbe will no, will no doubt make GSM cracking more accessible to most people now. Since AirProbe is very old and it doesn't work on newer versions of GNU Radio and Linux. So there is actually a voice call embedded in this capture file, but this video has gone on long enough and I plan to do a GSM voice decoding how-to at a later date. So stick around for that in the current weeks. Um, so yeah, now it's time for disclaimers, the fun part. So this video was made for the purposes of education and experimentation only. IMSI catching, SMS sniffing and voice call interception on cellular networks is illegal and punishable by hefty fines and imprisonment. You have been warned. So yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.